somewhere deep underground a young man that looks like a 15 years old boy is trying to build a DIY CNC machine. Will he be able to finish it? Will it work? Will he handle all of the hateful comments? Welcome in the third part of building the Indie Mule. Finally, today I'm going to connect all the electronics and also add some upgrades. Right now, after adding the egg crates on the ceiling, as I did in my previous video, if you don't know what's going on with egg crates on the ceiling, definitely check out my previous video. And this microphone that is quite close to me, the sound should be a lot better in my videos. And I hope that as for now, the situation is resolved when it comes to sound. Still not perfect. I will work a little bit more on that later, but it's good enough, hopefully. So in this video, I'm going to focus on building the electronics box for the Indie Mill and as always, small upgrades to the whole project like for example 3D printed holders for ball screws and that was a really really important upgrade I wanted to use the BKF12 holders for ball screws but I end up designing my own thing that is super easy to attach to aluminum profiles and combined with ball bearing and truss bearing this is a perfect combination I mean still not perfect because 3D printed part it is not super rigid definitely and I will later replace that with something made out of metal maybe aluminum maybe even still we will see When it comes to the electronics box, firstly I wanted to buy something online. Just, you know, a plastic box made especially for storing electronic components like fuses and other stuff, but then I thought I can easily design something like this and I can easily cut something like this on my laser cutter out of, for example, 5mm plywood. And that's exactly what I did. I made a quick design in Fusion 360 with all the holes, connectors and everything that I need with proper dimensions. And then I cut that on a laser, it was just like 30 minutes of cutting and it was ready. When it comes to connection, it was super simple to do, mainly because of Indie Shield that was, you know, labeled everywhere and it was super easy to connect each cable pretty much without any schematic but if you need a schematic here is a one for you one very very important thing to keep in mind is that 230 volts ac is a very very dangerous voltage so if you don't know what you are doing ask for help someone that actually knows what he's doing like an electrician maybe your parent maybe someone that is older if you don't know what you are doing definitely don't do this you know just ask for help
Firstly, I had to distribute 12 volts from power supply to stepper motor drivers to the Indy shield and also later to the fan that is still not there, but this is just a standard computer fan, 120 millimeters when it comes to the diameter, and I just need to connect it to the power supply and it will be ready. I will also add some kind of a filter in front just to keep the inside of the box clean. To make all of the connections more professional, I decided to use crimp terminals, and that's basically just a small piece of metal connected to a piece of plastic that you crimp on the end of the cable with this special tool and that way you can create really professional connections to the screw terminals with cables instead of using just you know bare cables that you twist with your hands it's, it's really not how it should be done but with this simple thing it really looks like it was done by a professional one thing to keep in mind right there is that if you want to connect two cables to one screw terminal it's better to use slightly bigger crimp terminal and connect two cables to one crimp terminal and then connect this one bigger crimp terminal to the screw terminal. I know there is a lot of terminals in here, but I hope you know what I'm talking about. As I mentioned, Inti Shield simplified connection a lot. You know, everything is labeled on the PCB, so you can just connect it without even knowing the schematic. It is, it is so easy, the screw terminals make it super easy, and you know, compared to like trying to figure out how to connect every cable to original GRBL Shield, it's just extremely, extremely easy. To add another small level of professionality to the whole project, I decided to use this kind of connectors for stepper motors. These are not made especially for stepper motors, but works great. You can easily secure the connection with a nut, and you can solder the cables, you can put it in the electronics box like I did, and it is just super simple to use, and it's cheap, and of course you can also just connect the stepper motor straight into the stepper motor driver, it will work fine, but with this you can easily disconnect and connect stepper motor, you can move the electronics box, you can move the wool CNC machine without any problems and that's great. It's again a small inexpensive thing that adds you know just a little bit of professionality to the whole project. Of course as always you can find all the files for the electronics box and also for the indie shield and in the future for a wool CNC machine for the indie mill on industry.cc link is in the description. Be amazed by front panel of this box. Yeah, of course, front panel of the electronics box is just perfect. When I was designing it, it was empty and I was like, it couldn't be empty. So on the top, I put the name of the project, of course, in the middle. Then the technical drawing that I exported from Fusion 360 and it was just perfect. You know, it was like one of the best ideas that I had recently. And my misspelled name on the bottom because I can't write on a keyboard. And of course, the date, as always, as on any of my project, there is a date. As for now, I don't have proper cables to connect all of the stepper motors to the connectors and because original cables are just 60 centimeters long, I need to buy some different cables, something longer to connect everything safely on a wool CNC machine. So as for now, I will just connect the X-axis stepper motor to the electronics box and we'll see if the X-axis is working properly. After conducting some tests outside just to see if there is no smoke inside the electronics box, and there is no smoke so it should be fine. I know that the stepper motor drivers probably work because they light up so they are properly connected to the power supply, power supply works great, uh, the Indy Shield and the Arduino also works fine. So now it's time to connect all of that to CNC.js and actually try moving the X axis. After connecting everything to the computer and trying to move the x-axis, it worked fine on the first try and that was quite surprising, without any problems, super smoothly, without any adjustments, that was great. So what's next for the Indie Mill project? I want to create a video, part 3.5, about building the table for a wool CNC machine, similar table to the one that I built for the laser cutter and I will put the electronics box on the bottom, CNC machine on the top and of course add some 
tools or something else and I also have to add some upgrades to the whole machine like limit switches, I have to add the fan to the electronics box, uh, finish something with the z-axis, there is still you know some small little details to finish so I will probably do all of that in video part number three and a half and then in part number four hopefully we will be finally able to test the machine to maybe even mill something, we'll put the spindle of the machine, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's it for this video. As always, huge thanks to my Patreons for supporting my projects. If you want to know what's going on behind the scenes and, you know, get some more updates on the Indie Mill project and some other projects, definitely check out my Patreon. There is a link in the description. Also, don't forget to check out industry.cc. That's basically my website where I share my new projects and you can find there the electronics box files, the Indie Shield files and the future Indie Mule files of course for free. Also if you would like to say something, you know, like seriously anything you want, you have some tips, ideas, you want to say something about the project, you like it, maybe you don't, definitely leave that in the comments. I read every single comment under my videos. Uh, sometimes I don't have time to reply, but I read every single comment. So if you just want to say something, say something in the comments. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.